let's talk a little bit about our sun. It is the star in our solar system. Uh, there are hundreds of millions of solar systems within our uh, Milky Way galaxy, and the sun is the only star close enough that we can actually directly study its surface. Um, it is very average. Remember, it's average temperature, average size, average lifespan. It's a yellow-orange um, star, etc. And later on, we're going to be talking about our solar system and the creation of our solar system. And I just want to remind you the sun is at the center, and it really does make up the vast majority of the mass within our solar system. The rest of the planets are um, rotating around uh, the sun. All right, um, the sun has layers, and this is really important, you guys. So you do need to know the layers and at least one um, significant piece of evidence. So I usually start from the inside. The solar interior is the first layer that we're going to talk about. It is not directly observable. We cannot see it. This is the powerhouse. This is where nuclear fusion happens. This is where the energy is generated. And I just want to remind you, so we do have an adult star, thank goodness. Um, and so we are using um, up our energy uh, source um, and eventually you know in about five billion years the earth uh, in the solar system is about five billion years old um, we're gonna run out so don't worry about something that's gonna happen in five billion years um, so again it's the powerhouse it's the source of energy it's the uh, place where nuclear fusion is happening all right, um, I have a kind of a mixture of cartoons and real life pictures, obviously, since we can't see the solar interior, we're just gonna have to kind of look at that um, with the cartoon. So our next layer is the photosphere. It is the sphere of light. It is where light is radiating. Um, it is pretty neat, you guys. It has this thing called uh, convection happening, and convection happens in a lava lamp. A lava lamp, I believe, is uh, antifreeze and wax. You turn on the light bulb, the light bulb puts out heat, it heats up the blob of wax and the wax expands. When the wax expands, it becomes less dense and it rises up, gets away from the heat source where it cools, condenses, becomes more dense and sinks down. And so that is what is happening um, in the photosphere um, with the solar material. And so here we, I will in the next picture, have a picture of the actual um, surface of the photosphere. And you can see these blobs and the blobs are called granules. So again, what's significant is the granules, um, they're showing the convection and that this is the sphere of light or where sunlight is radiated. All right, so there is my picture um, of the photosphere in those blobs. All right, next layer up is the chromosphere. It is the first layer of the atmosphere um, of the sun, but that's not what's significant. What is significant is it's hot incandescent jets of gas. Picture getting a lot of Bunsen burners, setting them all up and setting them, you know, a fire, and you've got the kind of blue white flame shooting up. That's sort of what's happening here in the chromosphere. And the the kind of appearance of that, it, they're spicules, and I'll show you guys a picture. Um, and it, it kind of looks like spiky hair or an angry cat where it lifts its uh, hair on its back. But that is actually those spicules are hot incandescent jets of gas that are burning. So here again, cartoon first. You guys can see labeled on the left, you can see the spiky things that look like... Uh, you know, Bart Simpson's hair spikes or something like that, and those are spicules. But here's a real life picture, and this is where the kind of the angry cat analogy comes in, um, where your cat gets mad, it lifts the hair on the back of its, uh, you know, on its back, and there you got it. So those are the spicules. And then the final, the last layer that we're going to talk about is the corona, Spanish for crown, right? And it is very dynamic. It is tenuous. It is in motion, kind of like if I had a video of a ghost that was moving around. Um, and what's really important, you guys, this is the source of the solar wind. It's also the hottest layer. And you would think the interior would be the hottest layer, and it's not. It's a physical chemical reaction that's kind of complicated. And, you know, when we were talking about Calvin, before I was like, ooh, a hot star is 30,000 degrees Kelvin. Um, yeah, the corona, this outermost layer, is a million degrees Kelvin. This is so darn hot, hottest layer. Now, the solar wind, um, the Earth, you guys, it's a good place to be. Our um, magnetic field on the Earth, um, which makes your compass point north, and we're going to be talking more about that later, it protects us from the solar wind. If you became a, an astronaut and you went outside of our um, space and our, our uh, 
magnetic field, you guys, we've got to protect you from a lot of different stuff. And um, the solar wind wants to fry you kind of like sunlight does to a vampire. It's very, very nasty. Um, so again, more on that later, because that is kind of interesting. Uh, but it's the source of the solar wind. It's dynamic, tenuous, uh, you know, wiggly like a ghost type thing. It's always in motion, um, and it is by far the hottest layer. So here, I wish this was an animation versus a still picture, and the light parts surrounding um, that sun right there, it would be kind of moving and wiggling like a ghost. All right, now you guys, this is just kind of a, um, a wrap it up type slide because we're going to be talking a lot about solar energy. And obviously we know visible light and we're going to be talking quite a bit about visible light um, later on because that's really the main source of energy that the sun puts out and it we need it. Um, it, it really you know, drives photosynthesis and atmospheric and oceanic circulation and things like that. But let's talk about all of the different energy that the sun puts out. And this has to do with wavelength. And we talked about wavelength before. Gamma rays are going to be the shortest wavelength part of the electromagnetic spectrum there at the top. And then the last bullet, radio waves, those are going to be the longest wavelength. So this is laid out according to wavelength. So gamma rays, luckily that's not the major energy that the sun puts out, but you know you don't want that on your body. That's what made the Incredible Hulk, the Incredible Hulk, right? I know it's fake, but still. Um, and so, uh, again, you become an astronaut or space uh, traveler or something, we got to protect your body from all of this stuff. The sun does put out x-rays. Um, again, it's a minor f part of the energy of the sun, but you guys know that you don't want to expose your body to x-rays any more than you have to. Um, the sun puts out UV radiation, UV light, and we know that that causes skin cancer and blindness, so more on that later at the last section of our class. Um, and so you, you put, you know, you have special sunglasses, they have UVA and UVB protection, you wear sunscreen, etc. But we do have an ozone layer in our atmosphere, um, and that's what I'll be talking about later. That is kind of a superhero and, and makes it so we can live on Earth. All right, luckily, the vast majority of energy put out by the sun is in the visible light spectrum. Um, and so more, a lot more on that later. Okay, the, the sun also puts out a little bit of infrared, but um, not significant. Um, otherwise, we, if you know, we evolved on Earth. We evolved to see in the visible light range, right? Roy G. Biv. Um, but how about Predator? Um, Predator, maybe he evolved on a planet where um, the star put out more infrared. And so uh, that's why he might have evolved, uh, uh, you know, to be able to see um, infrared. It's like a heat-seeking camera. Um, you guys have seen that when a helicopter looks for a warm body signature in the woods or something for a lost or person or a fugitive. All right, and then last but not least, radio waves. Now this is interesting, you guys. Search for extraterrestrial um, intelligence. Everybody's kind of like, ooh, are there little green men? Um, and what we do is we do point radio telescopes and we look for radio waves. And what we're looking for is patterns um, in these radio waves. Uh, this is totally from the sun, no pattern. Um, even if it, you listen to the worst music possible, let's say crap rap, okay? Um, you know, it still has a, a pattern or a beat or something like that. Um, and so, you know, that would be show us intelligent life. Um, and so, yeah, it's kind of interesting, but if you tuned into the sun, it would be most unpleasant.